Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Big Brother 19 live feed update for August 1st. Good morning. I am joined today by some wonderful, wonderful guests. First is my American Ninja Warrior co-host, Lita. How are you doing, Lita? I'm so good. It's so crazy. Right before we started this broadcast, someone with a megaphone outside yelled, Taryn's a bully. America loves Lita. So I'm really uh, hyped up now. I feel like uh, America's behind me being on this podcast. That is so unfair. They better not only air it so that I'm making fun of you. You make fun of me all the time. This is totally unjustified. What's going on? Uh, we got Brent with us, too. Uh, Brent, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. There's no, uh, there's no, no uh, uh, bullhorn here at all. I just want to make sure you don't see that. <laughs> 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 All right, we are here to talk about everything that went down on the feeds yesterday, get you updated, get you everything you need to know. There was a lot of stuff that happened, so we're going to try and break this down for you as much as possible, get the facts out, uh, and and let you know everything that happened. So first, in the morning, we had the veto ceremony. Paul uses the veto on Jason. Jason comes off the block, and uh, there you go. Jason, who went on, comes off, and uh, he's, he's nice and safe. Uh, Jason's off the block. And then after that... We had uh, Jessica and Cody talking. Jessica mentioned that her plan for next week is, all right, look, we know the sides of the house. It's Paul plus uh, Matt and Raven and Christmas and all of them. Uh, and then on the other side, it's Paul and Alex and Jason and Kevin and all of them. And what we need to do is nominate Alex and Raven. And then we'll take Alex off the block, replace her with Paul, and then we'll get Paul out, which seems like a really bad idea, right, Brent? Yeah, it does seem like a bad idea. They're not reading the house right, but their instincts haven't been right since the beginning. Um, Lita, by the way, your microphone, or sorry, your camera looks to be frozen. So if you can, if you're hearing me right now, say something, otherwise you might need to come back in. Um, I'm hearing you. I okay, can hear good. you. Yeah, but your video is definitely not working. Just want to make sure that's clear. Like I said, Cody and uh, Jessica's instincts, they just haven't been right. And I don't know why it seems like evident to me that they are on an island unto themselves and they don't seem to know that. But however, if that wasn't clear at the beginning of the day, it definitely became clear as the day went on. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, when, what is Lita reading on her phone? She's just I know, right? Reading her phone. Uh, <laughs> I guess I can't go to her with this question, but uh, her video, video is frozen. That's what it was. Um, yes. So <laughs> Lita is back. All right. Um, then we had this inciting incident here. Um, Jessica walks by Raven, who is talking to Jason and Kevin. And for the most part, they're just chatting about random things. But uh, unfortunately for them, Kevin, right before Jessica walks in, brings up, what do you think the chances are that she's going to use the halting hex? Well, she's probably going to use it, right? And as soon as they start to answer that question, Jessica walks by, they change the topic to, oh, wow, this veto uh, medallion is really heavy, guys, uh, which is a pretty obvious uh, topic change. And Jess is very upset by this. She pulls Raven in and uh, into one of the bedrooms and goes like, hey, look, this is not okay. If you're gonna come, if if you gonna if you want me to not use this hex, you'd better not be talking behind my back, changing topics, all that stuff. Uh, Raven denies it. She says, "No, no, no, no. I I promise you, this is not what I was doing. Look me in the eye. I'm telling you." She said, uh, "Just says you looked me in the eye when you told me you were voting Ramsey's out." But that happened last night. That, it was like one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, when she told the worst lie of all time. Yeah, or when you said you weren't going to vote Ramsey's out. And she was like, yeah, well, that was last minute. That was last minute. This, 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 this. Um, so um, Raven is is like, trying to be like, no, 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 I, I promise. This is, it's, it's, I didn't do this. Um, she goes out, uh, tries to talk to Jess. She pulls them into the Austin Powers room where Jess continues to question her. And she continues to say, look, we, I promise it wasn't anything to do with you. Um, and Jess is just like, it doesn't matter. I, I don't even, you're all being sketchy. You're all being bad. This is no good. Um, and then Cody gets involved and says, like, hey, look. <laughs> Cody being Cody like all right Raven but why are you against me why are you so against me Raven like he turns it into this whole uh like questioning thing like what happened they have a conversation about that for the most part it's pretty civil but obviously Raven feels a little bit cornered here um she, she feels cornered because she yeah. blew it that's what yeah. happened she blew it 
She knows she blew it. That's the problem. She knows that Jessica's probably going to use the hex now, and it's all her damn fault because she can't keep straight face when she's lying straight to their face. So uh, I think that's what's going on more than anything, and it was a very, very civil conversation. Look, the thing that's been exposed at this point is that Raven is a player in the game. You cannot lie to someone's face the night before an eviction, look them in the eye, and then claim, well, I'm just here. I just want to make jury. No, you're playing the game, so you're going to have to own your actions in the game, and I don't think Raven liked that that very much. Yeah, uh, I mean, Raven essentially, again, like in some ways, she wasn't really talking about Jessica. Um, so she's kind of telling the truth here. But at the same time, she's not able to sell that this wasn't something that she was doing against Jessica. And Jessica's right that for the most part, as as a whole, she is against Jessica. And she is planning on backstabbing Jessica with this whole plan to take out Alex for her. Uh, right, uh, Lita? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's this whole thing of like a very common justification in the house is like, oh, well, people are just being sketchy. If you just like want a reason to not be with someone, they just say like, oh, they're acting sketchy. And like, I guess it's generally true if it's sketchy that Raven and her people are against Jess and Cody. But that's not really sketchy. That's just like true. And like, you know, something that's not very convenient for Jess and Cody. So I think that she just and Cody more so Jess, I think they're looking for reasons to snap. They're looking for reasons to, um, you know, maintain America's good graces and things like that. So even if the fact was that they weren't actually like gossiping about Jess or whatever, this was an opportunity that she took. And that's all it was. Yeah, this actually, it reminds me of the whole Panda incident where it's, it's kind of like, uh, like Raven wasn't talking trash about Jess or anything, but she was talking about Jess. So when Raven says, I wasn't talking bad about you, she's trying, she's like thinking that she's telling the truth, but she's leaving out the parts that are inconvenient to her, which is kind of what Jess did with the whole pan panda thing. And, uh, and so like for Raven, when Raven goes and retells this to Paul in their group, she's legit. She's telling them, I, I wasn't even saying anything. I really wasn't. And, uh, I think she genuinely kind of believes that. But again, she's leaving out the important details. And those important details are what kind of like caused this uh, this strife and this uh, commotion to happen. So Paul at this point decides, OK, I'm going to use this because clearly Jessica's planning on using the hex. And here, here we go. What happened before was Cody went off on me and that really upset Jessica. And that's the reason why she was thinking about not using the hex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to get under Cody's skin, get him to go off on me again, and then maybe she'll consider not using the hex again. So he says, all right, Raven, you start crying. We're gonna go downstairs and be like, hey, Cody, why is Raven crying? Why'd you make her cry? Which is essentially what happens. Raven starts to fake cry, which she later says turned into real crying, and she actually- She believes upset. she's crying by this point. Let's make yeah. that clear. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes. I'll keep quiet. Yes, oh, so so this is, uh, this, is, this is essentially, and this is kind of the confusing part, I think, is that, Paul tells her to fake cry, but I think it became genuine in a way, as genuine as, as Raven can be. And um, she later tells Paul that, or, or she she then tells Paul that like she did feel cornered and she felt threatened and that she has a history of abuse and that this is kind of coming out from that situation. And I think this is another one of those disconnects that where it like, this is something that really makes Paul feel justified in what comes later, where it's like, oh, well, I'm just protecting Raven. And uh, like, again, it's it's like, it's it's hard to tell. Raven did not, it, it really did seem like until Paul told her to start fake crying, she wasn't that upset. But then uh, who knows? Lita, what, what did you think of the whole Raven situation here? Okay, I know that people want me to tear Raven apart. I know that. But I also think that, at a certain point, maybe something that she's saying is true. And I don't think that we can take everything she's saying as a lie. And I'm not going to be the arbiter of whether or not Raven has abuse in her past. Because if I'm wrong about that, that's a terrible thing to be wrong about. So I think that all of this, I think Paul telling her to cry, I think her parlaying it into this, you know, bigger thing about her. I think all of it was certainly very icky, but I can't, I can't be the one to determine if Raven was for real crying or not. From a strategy perspective, I think that this was a really, I don't know, not very classy thing for Paul to do in general. <laughs> um, and of course, Raven could have said no to this plan. And so she is implicated in that. But I think 
using people like this is, you know, a little bit, um, you know, messy. <laughs> yes. All right. So, so this is this is where like this powder keg is starting to build up, right? Where uh, Paul is frustrated because Jessica has decided to not take their deal. Essentially, um, he's also feeling like, oh, I'm justified in what I'm doing here because Cody is the bully. You know, it, we have to remember that up until this point, uh, Cody is the one that has been seen as the aggressor in this conflict with him. Um, he was the one that got in Paul's face and Jessica got upset with Cody about it. So Paul feels like all I need to do is instigate uh, Cody enough that he'll come after me. And now that Raven has felt threatened by him, uh, this is like real, like he is such a bully. He even bullied Raven, how, how terrible of him. Um, and he's really using that as justification and fuel to get everyone riled up to go after uh, Cody. And so he does confront Cody. He says, why is Raven crying? Cody denies even being involved in that conversation. Jessica also denies that Cody was involved in that conversation. I don't know why they're denying that. Uh, he was involved, obviously. Um, but, you know, it, again, it had like these little details, like they get in the way of things where it's like, it doesn't really matter. Like he was there, but it wasn't a bad thing that he was there, but they're denying that he's there, which continues the conflict um and then if essentially the group regroups and they go they talk about a plan to like all right we're really gonna get under cody's skin this has to happen christmas comes up with the idea let's question his military experience brilliant um, idea yes uh i have no idea why she thinks this is a good move uh obviously it's something that's gonna get under his skin but it's never gonna be a good look it's just i, I don't see any scenario where like this is i mean unless cody is so vehemently hated by the audience for pretending to be a veteran this entire season and she's finally the one calling him out on it like that's the only situation where she's even close to uh being in the right in this and even then it's kind of like like what are you doing right lita Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you guys talked about it on uh, the roundtable last night and did a good job where this is just regardless of what you think about this strategy, quote unquote, of uh, trying to make Cody snap and trying to get him out of the house that way. Um, this is a really gross way to go about doing it. And I get that Christmas wants to go for the jugular. It's like, all right, what's the quick, quickest, fastest way to do this? So I guess that's her justification. But it's only going to make her look terrible. But maybe it doesn't matter for Christmas because she's just, like, locked in to yeah. go. I think what's happening long. here, too, is that, like, Christmas in, in some ways feels like a veteran. I don't mean a veteran of Big Brother. I mean a veteran of the military because she did contracting work out in the Middle East. But she's not. She didn't sign on the dotted line like Cody did. Cody did five years in the Air Force and five years in the Marines, okay? So he put his life on the line. And for people who say, well, you know, I've seen people on Twitter, specifically McRae, uh, previous Big Brother house guests, who say, well, why does that job deserve any more respect than other jobs? Because they say, you know, know what send me i will go die for somebody else that's why they sign on the dotted line so you don't get to take that and use it as something in a big brother game a strategy because it's really gross to me right now okay i just couldn't stand watching it i think that's where it went from being okay like getting under jess's skin to try to get her to try to get cody not i have it flipped getting under cody's skin to try to get jess to not use the hex was okay strategy bad strategy but i never thought it was going to work but it was strategy nonetheless but that morphed into let's get cody to self-evict let's screw the whole hex strategy let's try to get cody to self-evict and that's never ever fun watching the entire house gang up on one or two people to try to get them to literally self-evict from the game need we forget that we've already had somebody self-evict from the game this season which doesn't happen that often so them trying this as a I guess you can call it strategy, just really felt like such a stretch for me. And by the way, really quickly, everybody in the chat who's wanting me to go off, I'm doing my best here, but I had instructed ahead of time, and I agree with Taryn, <laughs> that there was a lot of stuff that happened on the feed yesterday that we want to get through for you guys. And so I'm purposely holding back so that we can get through all of the information, get it out there, and then talk about it. So that's where we're at right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, I and see I, everybody in the chat. <laughs> Preach, Brent, come on, tear them up, Brent. And I want to, believe me, I do. But I want to get through this Periscope or this, uh, this uh, Facebook Live as 
as well. Yes, uh, I, I agree. I agree, Brent. I think that uh, especially when dealing with the military, it's obviously something that uh, that often can cause some things, especially like uh, a post-traumatic stress disorder is is intimately linked with with uh, service in the military often. And, you know, somebody like Cody, you're trying to get under his skin, especially like attacking his military service uh, and, and trying to like get him to be set off. It really is... Uh, it, it is a point where it's like, this is a line that I don't think should be crossed. I understand the concept behind it. I understand why Paul thought of it. But when Christmas brings the military stuff into it, that's when it's just like, uh, this is this is no good. And, and Matt brings this up. Matt says, I don't think this is a good idea. This is a guy that's killed people. I don't think that we should be instigating him and getting him to like punch people or self-evict. That doesn't seem right to me. I don't want to, and I want to have to like, look at Josh bleeding on the floor. Uh, this is just seems very wrong to me. And Christmas gets very offended by that. Christmas says, what are you, why are you lecturing me of uh, like all of a sudden? Like, why, why are you coming at me like that? And Matt and Christmas get into an argument about this. Uh, this is just, this is just mayhem at this point, Lita. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing that I think some people are missing in all of this is that if Cody is going to punch someone and, you know, get kicked out, someone has to be punched and they are all not really seeming to consider the fact that, like, they're asking for someone to really get hurt. Like, do they think that Cody's just going to, like, shove someone and get kicked out? Like, if he gets set off, like, he could really get set off. They have no idea, like, what he would do or what he's capable of, even if this was the thing that was actually going to work, which given that he has the discipline of five years in the Marines, I don't think that Cody is really going to snap at, you know, people being mean to him in a house. Like, it just it's not realistic. So Matt and Raven have this, I mean, Matt and Christmas. Oh, so used to grouping them together. Matt right. and Christmas have this fight. Um, and then Matt walks away from it being like, she needs to apologize for her tone, which I thought was a weird takeaway. Like, shouldn't she have to apologize for coming up with this super disrespectful plan that Matt obviously knows it's not a good idea. Yeah. I don't know. He, the, he, knows it's not a good, he thinks it's not a good idea from a strategy standpoint or from like living in the house with these people standpoint. He's not talking about it from a, oh my God, they're a human being and we need to respect them standpoint. I mean, that seems to be lost. They're, they're sort of like dehumanizing Cody and Jessica at this point where they're not even worthy of being in a game at this point. They're denying us jury. They're screwing it up for everybody. Paul's ranting to everybody else, but hey guys, I tried to do what I could. I tried to get you to jury, but we've got these two people on the side who are screwing it up. I guess you guys are just my dogs, okay? And it's just not a very good look. It just all went downhill from there. Basically, Raven, Alex, uh, Josh, and Paul were the four heads of going after Jessica and Cody. Everyone else, for the most part, was completely silent, but it felt like it was 10 against 2. Yes, uh, and that's that's very true. And I and I pointed that out later. Uh, the, like the four people that really went off were those four. Um, and we see uh, Josh. Then he starts going after Cody at this point uh, with the pots and the pans and the yelling and the you don't deserve yes, to be I, here. I love, like, let me be clear about this. I don't mean to interrupt, but this is very important. Paul specifically instructed him to go after yeah. Cody's military stance. Like say words like, "Okay, Josh, this is what you need to do." Say words like, "You know, you're not a man anymore. He's a coward. He's not even a real marine." I mean. It, that's just it's just below the belt and so that's why the the fans had such a visceral reaction as did i yes and so uh so he goes after cody um and at this point uh jason is another person who starts to go i, I don't like this this do uh, this doesn't seem right to me i don't like the all these people i don't it's 10 to 2 that just doesn't feel right at the same time i'm a hypocrite because i'm just sitting here watching anyway um I so like that he said that. Uh, yeah yeah that was fun yeah <laughs> Um, so then we, uh, we had a conversation with Jess and Paul where, uh, Paul tries to, uh, you know, again, like talk about this whole thing with her, try to get her to not use the hex. And she accuses Paul of, of essentially being the, uh, the ringleader and putting people up to coming after them. Um, so it was like, uh, telling Josh to come after them, telling Jason to make that veto speech, all of that stuff. Paul denies it all. He says, what are you talking about? Even if I did have that power, why would I use it in this way? So on and so forth. Uh, essentially like, why would I do this? Because it would just make you use the hex if you were targeted that way, which is true. Why are you doing it, Paul? Because it is just making her want to use the hex more. 
Uh, um, so I like though that Jessica specifically called him out in this conversation because he said, "Well, why would I? Why would I do that?" And she's like, "Because you know I'm going to use the hex, and it keeps me and Cody isolated and all eyes off of you." Like she had him pegged in this conversation. It was like one of those moments on a reality show where somebody's eyes are completely open at this point, and she sees Paul for what he is in the game right now. Yeah, and Paul is very much just like, oh, "Stop telling me truth. This is yes. not good." Yes. Um, Paul right. is saying like, oh, I never tell people what to do. I give advice when people ask it of me. <laughs> yeah. Like he, it really is so frustrating to watch. And I can't imagine how frustrated he is finally having someone have his number. Yeah, it's uh, he's he's really trying to sell this. Like, I don't have control of people. They just come to me for advice. But Jess is not having it. Uh, and this is it's it's really getting to Paul that he's not able to control these people anymore. Yes. And uh, and I think that also contributes to, you know, what continues to happen. Um, Cody and Josh get into it even further. They start calling each other disgusting. Um, they're really uh, pretty upset with each other. Let's be clear about Josh and Cody really quick, too, because I have a bone to pick with Josh. Sorry, I just feel like this is going <laughs> to blow past, and I want to I talk about it really quickly. Josh continually says, like, Cody's the bully. He said, Josh says, I'm not the bully. I mean, like, you know, he, they've been bullying me this whole time, and, I, you know, I, I don't do anything. Josh takes, like, one comment that was said, it, just like with the pickle juice, he's still talking about the hot sauce and the pickle juice with Mark. Like, he takes one comment that said and just runs it into the ground like Cody is the bad guy. Meanwhile, the whole argument is basically Josh just going off on Cody and Cody trying to shut it down and be quiet the whole time. <laughs> yes. So um, so that, that, that fight kind of uh, dissipates and uh, Cody and Jessica uh, sort of isolate themselves into the uh, Austin Powers room, but Jessica does get pulled out and this is about the time that we started the round table and we decided to delay it so that we could watch this big blow up. Uh, Jessica is out in near the kitchen where everybody else is and Alex everybody. starts coming from for her and Raven starts coming for her. Uh, Alex, because Alex has, it's now out that like Jessica turned this deal down. So Paul it felt like, okay, well now it's okay to let everyone know that Alex already knew about it. But Alex is pretending that she just found out about it saying like, what? You, you're, you're, you're trying to target me. You made a deal with the whole house to target me. Like what the hell, what's going on with this? Um, like, and Jessica saying, come on, I, you put me on the block. And Alex is like, what are you? Are you stupid? I put you on the block, but I kept you safe. And again, this is like, they're both kind of, in the right here in some ways where like Alex really didn't want to take Jessica out, but Alex also doesn't like Jessica and Jessica's not doing this because Alex put her up. Jessica's doing this because she's hated Alex from the start. So uh, <laughs> this is like a uh, back and forth. They're really not okay with each other. Uh, Raven jumps in like, Oh, you came at me for, for pretending that I was talking to people. And I mean, Raven really just has, doesn't really have a, a dog in this fight, but she really acts like she does. And she's really, not getting really enough attention. Taryn. Yes, it's it's not Alex and Jessica, it's Raven and Jessica. That's, yeah. what, that's what it is. Um, so that happens. And then, of course, Josh is being Josh. He's, like, just running around with pots and pans. Um, and uh, Paul is in on this occasionally. Paul jumps in, like, you you screwed me over with this deal. I stuck my neck out on the line for you by getting everyone to agree to take Alex out. And now you've turned your back on it. You you turned the deal down. Um, so these four in particular are really going after Jessica. Cody finally comes out, pulls Jessica into the backyard. And um, it seemed like maybe that would be the end of it because then the attention turns on to Mark. Uh, Alex getting really at, mad at Mark because he was there. Like I said, everyone was there. But uh, Mark didn't stick up for Alex, and she feels like, "What? What are you? Why are you? Why aren't you defending us? Why are you always on their side?" And uh, that is obviously not super. It uh, doesn't go well with Mark. But Paul decides to be like, All right, "Guys, guys, guys, we need to focus it on Cody and Jessica." He brings them outside. He continue. He tells them to continue. He says, "Bark like you're my dogs," because that's what Cody said to him that they're they're his dogs, and he treats them like dogs. So Raven's like, "Woof, woof, woof! I'm a dog." And, and she uh, used the c word to them. Oh, and yes, she yes. flipped them off. I just want Raven's true colors to be shown to everybody. If you didn't watch the, sh the feeds yesterday, you need to go back and look at it. It's about oh, 8 yeah. o'clock Eastern time. Anyway. Yes, and uh, uh, GN in the chat says it's also about the cat ears. Um, and this has been a question. Who actually took the cat ears? Uh, I believe this happened pre-feed, so it's hard to know for sure. But to the best of my knowledge... Raven definitely took the Coke and spilled the Coke. I know that for a fact. I believe she also took the cat ears, but there is some 
uh, speculation that maybe it was Jessica. We're not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure it was Raven. She had a conversation with Elena where Elena told her to deny, deny, deny. Don't ever admit that you did this. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But uh, that got brought up in the fight as well. Uh, we got Josh outside banging pots and pans, doing da 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 And uh, like I said, and- people, one thing. He's got yeah. one thing. It's the meatball, the pots and pans, the circus song. You know, it's that's just how it is. Hey, that's three things. Yeah. He's very versatile. <laughs> Yes, and uh, um, so Paul is also he's dancing around uh, while while this is happening. It's this is really like a circus act at this point. Uh, Cody and Jessica are on the uh, the hammock, uh, just trying to sort of like drown this all out. They don't really get involved anymore past this point. This is just right. really just laying it on over and over at this point. Paul eventually gets called into the diary room. They tell him, "Dude, chill out." Uh, we can't have people self-evicting. We can't have people inciting violence. Uh, you need to not mention those things and not try to achieve those things. Um, I said this on the round table. I feel like this was a little too late. Uh, they should have shut this down when they were talking about trying to incite him to violence rather than uh, shortly after they actually did it. Um, but this obviously really, uh, you know, it, it set Jess and Cody off. They uh, then talked for a long time about quitting the game. Uh, they had a very long conversation about whether or not they wanted to, whether, the, uh, the, you know, they'd be they'd have to pay for their chip there. They wouldn't be able to get any money from it. Uh, would it affect uh, Jessica's job? Um, would the fans be let down? All of that. They eventually go into the DR a few times and get talked out of it, essentially. Um, and- I would say really quickly, I just want to be clear and give them credit for this too. They had decided they were going to stay before they yeah. ever went in the DR. The DR helped them and it put them in a better frame of mind. But Jessica rightly said, look, there have been so many other people, like 300 other people who've done this before me. I can do 10 days. If I get evicted 10 days from now, no big deal. And number two, the fans gave me this power for a reason and I don't want to let people down. So I just want to make sure that that's out there. Yeah, that's they they were leaning toward, they were already like, we're, we're going to stay. Yeah, we don't want uh, to give people what they want. They, yeah. did, they did get called into the DR to be talked down and there was uh jessica said that there was a nice lady in there that um that she really appreciated and it helped her uh get some motivation to stay in the game um so at this point the fans are going wild because they from the second that christmas brought up the military thing it really just took off on twitter and, and on on reddit and all of these places where uh it's like well, this is this is too far this is ridiculous um, and by the time this big blow up happens, everyone is just really out on Paul. There was a big Reddit thread of like alumni Twitter responses to Paul. Basically, everyone is just like, Paul has gone too far. Uh, down, down on Paul, up on Jess and Cody. Um, they are, they have officially become the underdogs for sure. Uh, really just bad look for Paul. Uh, and it got so bad that we, even got a bullhorn over the wall, uh, the bullhorn saying, America loves Jess, uh, Paul is a bully, and uh, unfortunately, Jess and Cody do not hear this message. Um, they speculate that it was positive for them, but Jess is like, well, it could have been bad too, so we can't actually know for sure. Yeah, let me but, give a, just, oh, go ahead, sorry, I thought you were done. I was going to say, but Paul does know what it says, and it really, it shook Paul to his core a bit here. Yes, yeah. first of all, um, I, I, I hesitate to say that I liked this. But I liked it. I really, really did. I was like, whoever did I advocate for you, but it was like, I mean, I could just, every once in a while, I guess we need something like that. And uh, I will give you a little bit of advice. Like if you're going to do this, make sure you use words that have like vowels in them. Like I feel like whoever did this should have said America loves Jess and Cody. I feel like that would have like carried really well. The word Conscience. Jess does not carry very well. And she couldn't understand what was being said. So if you do it again, don't screw it up. Anyway, like I said, the house knows that that, that it's not a good look for them. Obviously, they, people were called into the DR. There was a little bit of fish happening, and they were told to shut it down. I think Josh correctly realizes that production is saving them from themselves at this point because it's not a good look. And it starts to dawn on the 10 people on that side of the house that – they're probably the bad guys in this situation. And I love watching Paul because he starts to realize, and then he never really vocalized it in such this manner, but he's the Polly from last season that nobody liked. And it really hit him hard. Yeah, and uh, they had a lot of conversations about that. They ultimately decide by the end of the night, you know, we've done enough. 
we think it's unfair if they portray this as uh like uh like they're they're saying like you know we've been you know feeling attacked by cody for a long time for 40 days and if they just air this out of nowhere then it's gonna feel like it yeah. came out of nowhere it obviously it was they, they talked about yes. editing and i'm yeah. like bitch it doesn't have anything to do with editing do you forget that we're watching the fear on right now we see paul we see you we know what you're doing cry and fake about it you told told them to go after cody's military background we see everything it's not about editing it's about reality yeah. Yes, and I think that this is, you know, a, a deeper issue with Paul's game is that I really think that he, at times, at least, um, if not most of the time, cares more about how people think of him and how he looks than he does about the actual game. Um, just being the the returning player and knowing how well he was perceived last season, that he can only go down from here, basically, and he already has. And so I think the sudden realization that he has blown it, that he does not have America's love anymore, and when he goes back, his life is going to be very different than when he came back from last year i think that that has totally shaken him and now it's like oh we're gonna do the cabin strategy of let's make them breakfast that'll get them on our side and and not on their on not on their side but you know kill them with kindness this whole idea that oh suddenly like we've done enough and it it really is just this like earth-shattering revelation to paul triggered by the uh the bullhorn that he's now i think he's totally shaken yeah and they essentially they do come up with this plan to be like all right well we need to chill out and we need to start killing them with kindness instead uh which um you know they probably should have done in the first place but uh it does feel as though they have been shut down um yeah they've been uh they've been told like hey, you gotta you gotta stop this um and the, the, they seem on board with that. Like they're gonna, they're gonna slow down. Paul recognizes that. I think he knows from from experience, right? Like what happened with Pauly, where like you cannot get out of that hole by digging yourself deeper. You need to just extricate yourself from it and be like, okay, we will change our behavior entirely and try that to see if that works. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't know though. I feel like this was the moment that Paul kind of lost pretty much everyone i feel like uh it's hard to see him coming back from this especially because i don't see a way to edit this in a way where paul looks justified and again i see the, i think like if you follow the line of logic right like paul feels legitimately i think paul felt threatened by cody when cody got in his face in the hoh room and i think that he like overcompensated by being overly macho when he like struts his stuff downstairs but i think it shook him a bit and i think he was happy that jessica was upset by it and i think he felt really justified like oh cody is this big like aggressive alpha male and i get to play on that and i get to get under his skin and get him to expose who he really is but in the process of doing that he he became worse than cody himself and uh i think that he doesn't see See that quite yet but it's possible that because of this uh this uh bullhorn that he's starting to be like oh man this is not good at the very least this is not going to be edited well and so it's going to be it's uh it's going to be a tough road for paul but we'll see we'll see what happens because here's the thing about the bullhorn is that he they gave warning to paul and now paul knows what to do to rehabilitate his image if he's smart enough. And he also knows that maybe he's been going a little too aggressive in the game. If anything, this bullhorn might be a benefit to Paul's game more than it is a boon to it because uh, it's it, it gives him some warning and it gives him uh, some well, feedback okay, on what to do. Like, I don't even mind that. Like, if Paul changes his behavior and he's, uh, like, a little bit of a different person, I actually would admire that if he's able to actually adapt to the way the fans are feeling. On the other hand, he's not playing for the fans. I don't know. I mean, well, I don't know. But before we did, uh, when when Big Brother was coming back this season and Paul came onto the show, I think it was Rob who said that, you know, he's not there to win the game. He's just there to, like, have a good time and, like, you know, make some fans and, uh uh you know, have, just have a great summer, basically, and because people love him, you know? But – Changed. I wonder if he really did start to believe at some point that he could win the game because I know much of the house thinks that he can win the game. So maybe that's where this aggressive gameplay is coming from because he never really had this much power at all last season. Maybe maybe there was a flicker of it, but it wasn't there for 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 much of a moment. It really was a dark contrast, like from 
from what they were doing previously to what they were saying at the end of the night. Like, you know, we're not bullying them. We're not doing anything. Like, well, we don't we don't want them to self-evict. When you were just saying that four hours before, like, that was the intent of the whole plan was to get them to self-evict or at least Cody to self-evict. So, it, like, again, people have very selective memories in the house and the fans will not forgive you for that. Yeah, well, they're revising everything. Paul is saying um, when the idea to, of just like being nice to them now comes up and, you know, killing them that way, Paul is like, well, we did that with Dominique. You know, we were nothing but nice to her. It's like, no, you weren't. Like, I, and I don't know if he believes that or if he just thinks that we have a short enough memory that if he says that it's true, that we'll remember it that way. But it's ridiculous. Uh, Lita, can I get you to bounce out and come back in? We got some uh, some static on the mic. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure. That. People were saying it was me, so I wasn't sure. But uh, anyway, like, okay. uh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree right. with what Lita yeah. said about uh, like uh, the, with, in regard to Dominique Paul, such a selective memory. Like this is the same dude who dressed up in a snake costume to mock Dominique, then was going to do blackface on national television until he was persuaded by the DR that that might not be a good idea, and he questioned her God right in front of her. Not exactly respectful. So please don't tell me that you were nice to Dominique all week long. Uh, yes. Um, and I, I, here's the thing about the bullhorn, though, because you, you said that you were OK with the bullhorn. I am never OK with bullhorns. I, I maintain my firm stance against bullhorns uh, and, and people trying to influence the game. Uh, and again, like it's, it's the sort of thing where it's like, first of all, it's something that you shouldn't be doing. There shouldn't be outside influence. Uh, I, Brent, you yourself said that you were super pissed that Christmas left the house because of potential outside influence. So I don't know why you'd be OK with bullhorn influencing because i'm things. a hypocrite i'm a <laughs> yes. fan and i own that okay like i mean i, I don't know i just uh, by the way lita you're frozen girl what is up with your camera anyway so like and the look on your face right now is just precious i got to <laughs> I'm a, yeah that's that's great right there um so uh i look i don't know I, I i i am a bit of a hypocrite about it i do take your point about the bullhorn but it was just something that i felt such visceral ang- anger that i needed an outlet for it. and you know what I mean, like things happened on BB 16 with Derek, where somebody said something over the fence and Derek had to navigate that. There are unplanned elements that happen in a big brother game that if you're a good enough player, you can navigate your way around. And uh, let's see if Paul can do it. <laughs> All right. Um, and, and here's the final point against the bullhorn is like it, it can have effects that you don't even intend. Right. Where like uh, this, like That's I said, true. this could be beneficial to Paul in a lot of ways. Um, and it, it's in some ways it could be negative toward uh, toward Jessica, especially if the if they're like, well, if if we're the bad guys here, then we need to make sure that they leave so that, you know, they're not the the underdog uh, good guys anymore. Um, so, uh, you know. So uh, we don't need the bullhorns. I'm I'm fine without the bullhorns. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> Lita, hopefully we've uh, hopefully we're good here. Uh, Am I back? You... I can't see Brent. Oh man. It's okay. Just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I just uh, some final thoughts on everything that went down. Obviously, this is a very controversial day. I feel like uh, people have been back and forth about Paul and about Jess and Cody, about like, you know, whether they like him because they've gone back and forth as like underdogs, not underdogs, cruel, not cruel. They've I think the thing that we need to remember here is that both sides are very flawed. I think that Paul and friends crossed the line today, but that doesn't make everyone innocent either. I think the uh, the only people that are really uh, haven't been very aggressive at all or, or mean at all are people like Kevin. Um, I think Mark uh, was pretty decent today. Uh, I think Jason has been pretty okay here. Um, and Matt seemed to legitimately want to stand up for uh, for what he thought was right in that moment. Um, those are the people that are... Uh, and Elena, yeah, Elena's, you know, she's she's doing her thing. So uh, I, have a, I have a question for uh, Lita. Lita, um, did you see Mark on the feeds last night saying to Elena, you know, that you know he was going to put up Jessica and Cody if he wins HOH? Do you, number one, do you think he's telling her the truth or do you think that he thinks that because Elena's pulled away from her, from him that he's just filling her with a bunch of BS because he knows that it might get back to Paul. Um, okay, so I'm going to answer this and let me see if it makes sense. I okay. think that I think that he's lying in that that's not actually what he would do, but I think that he is maybe telling the truth in the moment in that he wants to think that that's what he would do. Okay. If that makes sense. Like yeah. he's telling her that he would do that because he likes to believe that he would. But I think when the time actually comes, he's going to be, um, you know, persuaded and like realize that that's not what he actually needs to do. 
Yes. All right. Well, I think uh, I think this is an important update. I think yesterday was a big day. Uh, there's been a lot of pretty crazy days on the feeds, but I think this is probably going to be one of the more memorable things when we look back at this season. We're going to remember the. Uh, it's going to be remembered for bullying, I think, and that's uh, it's unfortunate. Um, it's uh, it's it's again, it's it's not like I'd rather be talking about the uh, the strategy of the game here and on the subtleties of that, but instead we're talking about uh, you know who was right and who was wrong and and all this bullying stuff and it's unfortunate that they went there uh rob says you know in the chat says there are no he- uh, heroes in big brother only villains well that's uh, why I, this season sucks because they're all villains that's yeah. why we need a couple of heroes it's very I feel true. Like people are trying to make jessica and cody the heroes i feel like jessica can own that title to a certain extent i don't think cody does very well with the hero label probably more of an anti-hero at this point um really quickly about cody too like people just be careful about using really broad labels to label people um i, I Anyway, it, it just when people say things like Cody's homophobic and they can't really point anything like there's, there's something made up on Twitter. Like Cody said, he, he doesn't like seeing two men kissing. First of all, it was made up as far as I can tell. I haven't seen any of that on the feeds and I've asked people if it was there. They said no. So people start making stuff up about it. But number two, you're using such a big word that is a horrible word to hang on somebody. And oftentimes the people that are in the Big Brother house are just flat ignorant there's no real hate behind them thus no phobia and i really just i want to make that clear to everybody can i respond to that sure yeah um so you can't (laughs) (laughs) well i I think that jessica and cody have been really really built up and i don't know what you said while i was uh evicted (laughs) from this chat but i think that they have been built up to a point where people are not remembering some of the comments that they made in the earlier weeks and my perspective is that this whole bullying thing against them, I obviously think it's terrible. I have been anti-Paul since BB-18. Like, this is not shocking to me. But I also am not, I, I can't support Cody and Jessica, and I have a hard time feeling sorry for them because even if you don't want to use these labels of transphobic or whatever, he has made transphobic comments. And at a certain point, it's hard for me to see beyond that. And I think that there is this idea of... um oh, they just don't know better. They are ignorant. And I believe that, that there is not malice behind them. But at a certain point, they are adults and we need to hold, hold, to hold them accountable for their actions. They need to be responsible for what they say. What group are they going to have to insult before we say, okay, that's too far. They're not just ignorant. They actually oh, are intolerant. I just, I just feel like as someone who's part of the LGBT community, and I know Taryn hates it when we talk about stuff like this, that's a little touchy subject. I, 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 but I would just say that I, it's sort of like, like Potter Stewart in the Supreme Court with obscenity. Like I know it when I see it. So I did not, I do not sense any malice coming from them. And I feel like I kind of know it when I see it. And I, I just, I don't see anything there. He's an ignorant Southerner who said things that about trans people that is, you know, in trans, as I said on Twitter, is an evolving area that isn't even legally protected at this point. So people don't understand it. It should be, but it's not, unfortunately. And people are learning about it. I feel like Cody's just one of those people. Yeah, but this was not a one-off comment. Jessica has said things about fat women. She has said things about Jews. She has said lots of things that have very much hurt me. And I, even if they are not coming from a place of malice, there are many, many people who come into this house who don't have uh, backgrounds with you know diverse communities who don't know any better, but they right. know not to make comments about groups that they don't understand that could be construed as offensive. And yeah, the pow pow comment, all of these things that I know that they that they are little comments all the time but it comes to a point where i cannot make excuses for them anymore and i think it's irresponsible for us to just say oh they don't know any better because they're adults they're not children all right i can take it i mean i I feel like you agreed with me and disagreed with me so i mean like like, i think i think there's a lot of look there's a lot of gray area here and the problem is that we can't read his mind you know we just don't we don't know what's in his heart and that's the problem yeah but i want to make clear it's both of them and it's Paul too. People have made <sighs> comments all season. I'm just right. saying that I think it's important that we acknowledge the things that they have said and how they could I be. I have perfect. been on this podcast before about saying that I feel like Cody and Jessica, to a certain extent, are the, they're just the avatars of the heroes at this point. Like they're not actually the heroes of the story, but we need somebody to rise up against Paul. So we're giving them that title with no sort of underlying foundation. 
Yeah, I, and I, uh, I, agree. I think uh, Rob says, you know, again, he says they're all flawed, uh, which I think is, I think is right. I think they're all, uh, they, uh, they all have their own flaws, and I think that right now uh, we're seeing Jessica and Cody as the underdogs. We're seeing them as the victims because of the the, the bullying that happened yesterday, if you want to call it that, um, and and that, as Lita points out, is sort of uh, washing over some of the things that right. people have been angry with them about in the past so uh, i like the discussion here i think there were uh, great points on both sides so we had people in the good, chat good. like people in the chat going yes to both of you so uh yes, I think that, I like that, that is too. a sign of a good debate so yeah. um thank you thank you both uh so that wraps up our live feed update for the day uh we will be back tomorrow i think i'm gonna do uh, it actually an hour earlier at 9 a.m eastern because i will be on my way to new york uh, a little later in the day so i need to uh, get that in a little earlier uh for the live show we're gonna have, be live with eric stein and johnny mac it's gonna be great um and the Terran Show, episode three with Ian Terry, just released today. Already getting some good feedback on that. I had an awesome conversation with Ian. Very excited for you guys to listen. Uh, really, really great stuff. Uh, I'm going to be recording with Lita right after this about American Ninja Warriors. So that'll be out later today, hopefully. Uh, maybe tomorrow. We'll, we'll see. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> Uh, make sure you check out our uh, recap of the Wednesday episode. Um, that will be tomorrow. <laughs> Today's Tuesday, yeah. Uh, tomorrow we'll uh, we'll be uh, live recapping the Wednesday night episode. Everything that happens with the veto with so, Ronnie Talbot and Melissa yeah. should be fun. Yes. It'll yeah. be very fun. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Uh, we will see you next time.